Today we're going to start off our basic science experience with a review of the scientific method. I previously sent you a video with the lecture I gave two years ago. I've tried to update that with some more examples and I think this will be helpful. So as we move forward, let's look at, first of all, the steps of the scientific method. The first step of the scientific method is called observation. Let's say you decide you want to toast for breakfast. You want toast for breakfast and you put two pieces of bread in a toaster. After a few minutes, you return to the toaster and find that the bread is not toasted. Okay, so your observation is what you see in the real world in any particular situation. In this case, it would be the fact that the toaster does not or will not toast. So the second step, this leads to a second step, which is somewhat obvious considering your observation. It's an inquiry or a question that is related to the observation that you've just made. In this case, the question would be, why will the toaster not produce toast or not toast the bread? The third step is an answer or an explanation to the question you've just generated. So in this case, and it is important that this be a testable explanation to the question that you've just formulated. So in this case, you would say, well, there are many reasons a toaster might not work, but in, in I believe that because the power outlet is broken and the toast, toaster runs on electricity, that is the reason the toaster will not toast. So your hypothesis is the power outlet is broken. Based on your hypothesis, you make a prediction of what would happen. So for example, your prediction is an outcome that you would expect if your hypothesis that you've just generated is correct. In this case, your prediction is if I plug the toaster into a different outlet, then the, toast will toast, the toaster will toast bread. So this assumes, obviously, that you had the toaster plugged in in the first place. For example, you could have said, if you noticed that it wasn't plugged in, your prediction might be, well, I need to plug this thing in. But if it's plugged in the wall and everything looks right, then your prediction is, well, let me try a different outlet because this runs on electricity and so I'm going to try a different outlet. So the prediction you make is I plug the toaster into a different outlet and the toaster will toast bread. The next, next step is to test the prediction that you've just made. To test the hypothesis, we made a prediction and we need to make an observation or perform an experiment that's associated with the prediction we just made. So for example, you might try to toast the toaster into a different outlet and try to toast your bread again. What you are trying to do is to either confirm your hypothesis or refute your hypothesis. If, if it works out, then you will accept your hypothesis and the answer will be made. If on the other hand, the toaster still doesn't toast bread, then you will refute your hy hypothesis or reject your hypothesis and you will have to make another, another hypothesis. If the toaster toasts bread, you come to the, a conclusion. The conclusion is a statement as to whether you are going to either accept or deny the hypothesis based on the outcome of your experiment. If the toaster works, your conclusion is, I accept my hypothesis and it is correct that the outlet I have it plugged in didn't work. If, on the other hand, the toaster did not toast the bread, then you would reject your hypothesis and you would throw it aside and try another hypothesis. Now, all of this comes to a point of a type of reasoning. Now, there are uh, fundamentally in logic, there are two types of reasoning inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is reasoning that moves from specific instances in nature 
into a generalized conclusion. Deductive reasoning, on the other hand, starts with a generalized concept or principle and then makes predictions about specific conclusions. If the generalized principle is true, then the specific conclusion you would make from that generalized conclusion is also true. On the other hand, with inductive reasoning, you gather multiple specific instances until you see a, a pattern that leads you to a generalized conclusion. As it turns out, scientific method is a form of inductive reasoning. Now this illustration or cartoon shows the difference between deductive and inductive reasoning. In deductive reasoning, you start with a theory. You can use that theory to, to generate or confirm a hypothesis. And then you go from that to quantitative research. On the other hand, with inductive reasoning, you start with the data that you collect you infer conclusions from your data, and then you move to your qualitative research. So on one side, you go from the general to the specific. On the other side, you go from the specific to the general. And scientific method is a form of inductive reasoning. If you remember, we started with an observation. We generated a hypothesis or a question based on that observation. We generated a hypothesis, and as we move through, we try to confirm that hypothesis. And if you confirm the hypothesis, you've moved from the general fact that the toaster didn't toast to a more general idea of the outlet was not working. If you plugged anything into that outlet, it would not work. So you start with the observation you many times will collect many observations and see a pattern in those observations which will lead you to a hypothesis. Once you've tested your hypothesis many times you can generate what's known as a theory which is many times people have sort of disrespected the concept of a theory as, as if it is something that was just dreamed up out of the blue. This is a mistake. A theory in science is something that has been derived from many experimental um, observations and, and generating a hypothesis which has been fairly well confirmed. And so to disrespect in some way a theory because it's called a theory is incorrect in science. For example, uh, it is a mistake well, I don't believe in evolution the way that it's presented in the secular sciences. It's a mistake to, to emphasize the fact that it's the, quote, theory, end quotes, of evolution. It is a theory, but it is also backed up by a considerable amount of scientific data. And so saying that it's a theory and trying to uh, disregard it because it's a theory is a real mistake. Now, there are some weaknesses to induction. Um, the first of those weaknesses, or several of those weaknesses, can be seen here. Now, this is one form of induction, okay? Making several observations and then, and then drawing a conclusion from that. So, for example, in this, in, in this example, you observed that a bee stung you, and it was an hymenopteron. A wasp stung you, and it was also a hymenopteran. And a fire ant stung you, and it indeed is a hymenopteran. So you've made three observations, and your conclusion from those three observations are that all hymenopterans have stingers. Now the problem with induction, and you might already see this problem, is the fact that you, you look at some specific situations, but you have not all you have not reviewed every possible situation. So your general conclusion may be flawed from a lack of extensive enough testing. Now the other one 
comes from the idea that there's a, a, a basic assumption in the inductive reasoning, and that is the fact that when if you observe something occurring several times in a row, then it will occur again in the same way, in the same manner, in the future. And you cannot actually know that. And this was... This is one of the pro one of the things that was brought brought out by several philosophers in that you can't know the future and multiple general or multiple specific observations even if they always occur the same way does not ensure that the next observation will go the same way. That being said, however, because we live in a universe of a with a god who is reliable and predictable, we can use this kind of reasoning. And that's part of the reason that it's important to live in a universe that where there is a God. Because the only way that you can break the, the laws that God has established is to say that there is no God and then that nature is fickle. And that's why induction re, inductive reasoning in, in some respects requires a God who is predictable. So let's move 